Joining me for the hour, we have Jason Snipe, Joe Terranova, Jenny Harrington, and Bill Baruch. But first, let's get to a check of the markets. Right now, looking at the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, and the Russell. The Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ higher, but off their highs the day. The Russell actually moving lower. That's something we're going to talk more about. The S&P and the NASDAQ also hitting 52-week highs. Uh, as I mentioned, the Russell down 1%. But before we get to the market, let's begin with a trio of top and bottom line beats for big banks. Shares opening higher before losing steam and kind of shifting back and forth. We have seen Wells Fargo go back to being positive. However, Citigroup down more than 2.5%. I just think we got to start here. Let's start with the good. Let's start with J.P. Morgan. What did we learn today? Um, beats, if you count their acquisition of First Republic assets or not. So a pretty strong quarter for J.P. Morgan. So what we learned is best in breed is exactly that. And the quality of the earnings were incredibly strong. For those that own J.P. Morgan like myself, you were rewarded for staying high up in quality. And I think that's the right approach when you're looking at a lot of the banks and certainly looking at financial institutions that are going to be reporting. The reaction today is very interesting. Um, clearly, Citi not being rewarded for what we heard from them. Uh, I think there was a lot of concern with the consumer at city large card balances being carried much higher rates uh, somewhat of a little bit of a challenging environment trading revenue which we expected down 13 right. percent uh, two things from two things from wells uh, first of all the reaction so so a little bit muted but i think when you look at wells you have to have concern about them citing office real estate being weak commercial real estate potentially weak and then Charlie Schaff talking about the regulatory environment tightening even further. So not unexpected what we got today in terms of the reaction because J.P. Morgan is the quality name. And I think that's where you're seeing the best performance on a on, on a second. note, I think what's important is to look at the trust banks today. OK, look at the trust banks. State Street down 10 percent. Northern Trust down uh, 5 percent and Bank of New York down somewhere around 7 percent. So trust banks trading lower, fees not very strong, flows not very strong. So far, it's kind of muted on the financial earnings. You know, Jenny, I want to come to you. I thought Wells Fargo was kind of interesting. It dipped into negative. Now it's rallied again. What did you think about the report? Um, obviously, a more consumer-focused bank there. Well, to be totally honest, I'm not up to speed on the Wells Fargo report, and so I'm sorry for that. I've just been focusing on the companies in my portfolio. Right, understood. But what I think is really interesting is you saying the more consumer-focused bank. And so when I think about Wells and when I think about when you ask Joe, what do you think about J.P. Morgan, my response would have been Jamie's comment, consumer balance sheets remain healthy and consumers are spending, albeit a little more slowly. So to me, like all of Jamie's comments, I thought that was actually the most important, which then even though I'm behind the curve on Wells, translates over. Right. And I and that's what we're seeing. And actually we just did our um, quarterly client call yesterday. And the theme of the quarterly call was that growth is slowing. And we went through all these, and so it's not going negative, right? But we went through all these pressures that are on the consumer. And I don't think the consumer, and, and was, it's hard to explain to your clients on a call, okay, the consumer's resilient, the consumer's holding up, but things aren't as good as they were. So you see things like student loans being needing to be repaid. You see mortgages and um, average monthly housing costs at like $2,000 a month, whereas pre-pandemic they're about $900 a month. You just see all these pressures like really kind of nibbling away at the consumer strength. And if you look at consumer excess savings, which after the money dumps from the pandemic were at $2.1 trillion, those are down to $800 billion. So as we think through Wells, which is really consumer focused, and we think about the fact that the consumer is hanging in there but slowing, it seems like we're okay, but not robust. And I right. hope that we as an investment community are adjusting our expectations for the, real, the realism of this environment, which is like, we're fine, just don't expect crazy growth that we've gotten for the past decade, because that's not here anymore.